The ambition behind the Art in School project um, is to stimulate lateral thinking and create opportunities for the children to have more project-based learning opportunities. I'm a big believer of in lateral thinking. I come from the finance business and I built my business based on integrity and lateral thinking. It's a very creative environment. It's not naturally expected or seen as creative, but fundamentally we need to resolve problems more creatively than our competitors. So I'm a big fan of lateral thinking and the idea was to put those pieces within the schools and create opportunity uh, for the children to take them as a starting point for a multi-curriculum journey. I was introduced to David, we had quite an interesting coffee when I'm, I meet this uh, giant of a man all of a sudden telling me I've got lots of paintings and I'd like to give them to you to, to display in school and yes they're a little bit value but I trust you and it'll all be okay. Well that was uh, one of those typical Guernsey conversations that uh, I entertain every day and it's one of the wonderful thing about the islands. Uh, it, was, it was great. Uh, we, we talk about the project to bring artworks into schools and I actually discovered that it would be fully aligned with the new curriculum. So I saw a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of, um, and a lot of goodwill to make it happen. The model of our new curriculum now gave us the flexibility to deliver this in schools and so I think where he was exciting me about the art available and his vision about how it could work in schools I equally got him as interested to really make him think that yes it could happen and we agreed literally within 20 or 30 minutes that we wanted to go ahead with it because we could share a vision going forward that would really have a positive impact on the outcomes of all our children and young people in Guernsey. Well, the uniqueness in the programme is that the children have the extended opportunity to enjoy the art and that gives them the chance to, with their teachers, explore some of the historical context or some of the, uh, some of the cultural context that the artist might be trying to portray. I was in one school where they'd looked at the piece of art from a mathematical perspective, looking at the shape and the depth of shape. Uh, see, seeing the configurations of geometry in the piece of art. In another I've seen children exploring the uh, turmoil in the society that the artist was living in. So I think the uniqueness comes about uh, because of the extended opportunity and the chance to revisit and the chance to get deeper into the painting or the piece of art without losing sight of it. And there's lots of great examples of that going on, you know, from, I think it was uh, Bova that uh, investigated the painting they had, which was of a, a siege, and they noticed there was writing once they started to look really closely with magnifying glasses, and, and there was Latin. And that led to a really interesting line of inquiry, well, what's this language? That you'd probably never have noticed, you know, if you'd spent 30 seconds looking at that picture in an art gallery. Different pictures have taken children down lines of inquiry which may be to do with language, they may be to do with technology, um, they may be to do with the artists themselves. I know there's an example where one school, I think it was St. Samson's, Skyped. And they found out about the artist, the artist was alive, uh, and they, they Skyped the artist and they were able to ask firsthand. That's a unique experience to be able to construct those questions and have that, that dialogue. Um, so very, very powerful in terms of those cross-curricular themes and also in terms of empowering children uh, and their, their learning because one of the things we're trying to promote in the, in the big picture curriculum is children's independence um, and their ability to make choices and to pursue lines of inquiry that are of interest to them and, and also have the, the tools that, to enable them to do that. Um, and this is just a great vehicle to allow them to, to do that. Of course, I've seen many uh, impressive examples, but one recent one was at Vauvert, where they had an under siege team, where basically from an engraving of a fortress, they, um, they went for a two months project that involved geography, creative writing, ICT, science, the law of forces, singing, and many other islands. 
and they went into the different directions. But also my takeaway from visiting the school and witnessing all those wonderful things that they made was also that because the original piece was sitting in the corridor was also that those children had additional freedom. They gained the right to take a break for themselves when they wish, go outside and pretend that they need to go and look at the piece for 30 seconds because they're working on something relevant. So one of the ind indirect consequences of this program is that we have pushed the boundaries in terms, the collaborative boundaries. And it's, now, it's, it, it, it's, it's a better environment for the children to learn because they feel more empowered, more free to do it at their own pace and they were very focused. The way that the art has impacted on the, the teaching has been quite significant actually, particularly around the fact that with the new big picture curriculum in, in Guernsey, we've been able to embrace the two together. So the art project has allowed us to look at cross-curricular links again, to look at the use, particularly with our topic on under siege, we've been able to look at the local area in great detail, do a lot of local history and geography within it. And so it's allowed teachers and children to see those connections between different subjects, something that isn't always possible to see quickly, but those opportunities to see topics, put them together, uh, construct a, uh, a series of lessons where there's a sequence to them, where so one thing builds upon the other. And of course, uh, a lovely, fantastic piece of uh, real artwork it's just a genuinely inspiring thing for both the children and, and the teachers to have in the school. The work that we've done from that one piece of art is such so broad across the across the subjects. Um, it's widened the learning, but also deepened the understanding of the children um, to do with all sorts of history, geography, art, application of drawing, all those kind of elements. We looked at it with magnifying glasses, we picked apart the minute detail, we talked about not only what the picture was of, but what materials we used. Can you see pencil marks? Did they go wrong? How did they go wrong? How did they correct it? What's the frame made of? Why is, um, what's the composition like? So we did, we did a whole, you know, just examine the painting for, for, for um, on those terms to begin with. And that was really exciting. Before we even started talking about influence of, of the painting, we, we picked it apart. Um, and looked at, looked at it in minute detail and that was really, as, as a practitioner, the painting did the work for me. I didn't really have to do much, I just put the painting down and said be careful with it, don't, help, don't lean on it. Um, here's the magnifying glasses and, and off they went and, and in small groups the conversations that I heard between the, chil between the, in, the children in those small groups was fantastic. I felt so privileged to be able to see such a special piece of artwork that had come a long way and was so old and had been drawn by a proper artist and it was just amazing and it was a really good experience. I liked about it that um, it was almost like a window where you could look into someone else's life because it seemed that everything was happening there. It wasn't just a painting, it was an actual picture of what was happening. I felt really special as a school and as a year group really, how we got to witness a real piece of art. I liked the fact that it it had a really interesting view of it because it also felt like you were a person on top of that hill with these two other people looking down at the this little town and like this castle, this town inside a castle and it just made it really special. Ways in for young people is always a great um, teaching ploy. Uh, once you've got them hooked you can take them on lots and lots of different journeys and of course the brilliant thing about art, uh, um, where would we be without art in society, where would we be without art in schools, is that it can provide those hooks and ways in into all sorts of different avenues that you can then explore with young people. An art in schools project makes you think of this is going to really develop our, our creative work uh, in two and three dimensional art, um, but it, it, it's done so much more than that. Uh, particularly inspiring writing. I think that's what surprised us, um, is showing children a you know, beautiful uh, piece of work by Suzanne Moxhay. Uh, and they looked at that and they were talking about journeys and then the teacher used that picture to stimulate the children's writing, uh, both in prose and poetry. And the quality of what they produced, we thought was really enhanced by that 
initial stimulus of, of a beautiful picture. Sometimes with poems, you have to sort of remember what it was like and it's quite difficult, but it's nice because it's right there and there's loads of detail in this painting. So there was loads of things to write about. Yeah, and there's like lots of different ideas and aspects of it, like you could do about the light or you could do about the forest in the background, and that was quite, it, you had a lot of choice of what you could write. Um, as a teacher, I think what I've really enjoyed is seeing the children's reaction to it. Um, and of course, when you're working with 28 different children, you get 28 different reactions. And I think that's, that's been the thing that I've enjoyed most about it all. In the past, we've used smart boards and we've used computers and we've used iPads, etc., to, to look at images and look at you know, artwork, etc. But it's not the same as seeing the real thing and actually the children get excited by that, they get engaged by that and, and actually they also see things that they may not have noticed with a cursory glance on, a, on an iPad and just to have the opportunity to look at it again and let's look at it again and actually see the detail or even see the brush strokes or see the, the colours, the vivid colours is just um, an amazing opportunity. You can't really see the details online but in, when it's near you you um you can. I like the fact that they're up close and physical, so you get to see them at school and you get to see all the techniques, but then you get to go into the art lessons with a lot more inspiration than you would have before, as I wouldn't have really noticed um, art online, but now I actually have the chance to go and see something which is familiar to me at school. You go around Guernsey and you don't really notice the things and all of the colours you could use until you actually gain the skill of doing art. We found that it suddenly just spilled and filtered into so many areas of the curriculum. So in fact, teachers were then saying, well, actually, I need to be looking at this in maths here because um, the shapes and the abstract, um, and, and suddenly something as lovely as this artwork, we were exploring angles and parallel lines and you know all, all sorts were coming at all different levels, from our youngest four-year-olds right through to our 11-year-olds. And then of course it, it spilled into science and colour and spectrum and mixing and blending and shading. Um, when I saw the painting, it was the first time that I'd seen this painting. It wasn't an artist I'd known or come across before. Um, and when, when it came into school, it just, seeing it in real life, it really hit me, which is so much different to seeing it on, on the screen, so to speak. Um, and so I was a bit bowled over by it. And at that moment in time, we'd just done a lot of work on 2D shape, and I was about to introduce angles and angles of term. So we, um, I decided to use that as a hook for a lesson in maths. And the children were absolutely in awe of the fact that it was a real painting. That's what I kept saying, it's real, it's come from a gallery. You know, they were quite surprised at that. Um, and then we started with the maths lessons, looking for the angles within the painting, looking at the different types of angles, the different way the shapes were used to create the, the image to make some of them look 3D, 2D, etc. Um, and then they went on to design their own images of whatever they wished. So I had dancers on stage, we had ballerinas, and we had um, singers and footballers on pitches. I think we had a zookeeper in a zoo, all, all kinds of different scenarios, whatever they chose. Um, but they were given very specific criteria that they had to include so many um, quadrilaterals or different types of quadrilaterals, they had to include right angles, they had to include so many acute, so many obtuse, so that it wasn't just a case of drawing something very quickly together. They had to think about how they were going to meet that criteria. Since when we had our first piece, El Gato Parrot, it helped us engage with the students to assess what they thought the artist was trying to communicate and that opened up their voice to explain how they felt especially with our um, therapy lady who works with them on a one-to-one -one for intervention to talk about their emotional state at that particular time. So they were inspired by the colours and how it looked and how it wasn't a perfect parrot it was maybe restrained by the ties or restrained by the fabric or they often said that they thought it looked like it had carried its troubles on its back or had the weight of the world on its shoulders or depending on the child they would say oh it's really cool because it carries its house around with them so yeah it did inspire the students to talk about things that 
but it often linked to how they were actually feeling at the time, whether they felt troubled or whether they felt elated and optimistic. The fact that the colour in the bird's wings allowed the bird to shine and allowed them to shine in their everyday life even though they might have made mistakes. So the pieces that came out from that were very poignant about how the students are feeling at a particular moment. Both Forrest and Laurent Dan um, used the arts as a prompt for the topic work um, for the spring term um, and it allowed all sorts of routes for the learning. Um, the children explored geography, history, um, ICT um, and as it was being child-led the topic just flourished in that way. It's a bit like you're like doing some hard work and you're easy at it and um, you're so proud of yourself doing it and it's and it's, it's gonna be and it was easy peasy lever squeezy and how did it make you feel Rory? Very quite happy because um it's my favourite thing to do, drawing. Drawing is actually my favourite thing to do. And it's, it's, it's awesome. So the learning that takes place in reception is play-based. We don't work and then stop and pause and play. Everything we do is play. So the way children approach learning is through play and through their play that is very valuable, but we can't predict what they're going to do. What we do is provide resources that we think will be useful to them to explore. So we provided lots of colourful electrical tape that they could cut, they could position themselves. We also provided lots of bright coloured paper and we presented it in a way that they had the scissors, they had the glue that they needed and then we let them run with it. And that's what play-based learning is. We, it's certainly not led by an adult, it's led by the children. And sometimes they take it in directions that you don't expect. Um, some of them made 2D pictures and created lovely shape pictures and others did something, other things that we didn't expect, like make hats with it and cover themselves in it and some of them sort of became the farmer. We had paper stuck around their chests and they and, and masks to be the farmer and that's wonderful and that's, that's how they learn about the world around them through play and that's what they did with this art. I think the nice thing about it was that it brought the school together and all the different year groups were, were working from the same artists, the same painting as initial stimulus, but of course the different age children at different stages, different skills development, all did different things and it was nice for the children to see what the other year groups were doing. So for us it was play and we had lots of electrical tape and we were cutting it and we were looking at the colours and the shapes and making our artwork inspired but certainly not copied by the original, whereas other year groups went in different directions, but it was nice because our children, as we walked around school, we saw displays going up. They went to the Ice Deadford, they could see, you know, the big picture of what happened. And we had some common ground with what year one had done and what year two had done, all the way up to year six. We had 700 children visiting the last Olivia Camp exhibition. And um, I think I saw all of them. Uh, and uh, one thing that I particularly enjoy was to pretend in front of the large representation of Guernsey that Olivia made, is to pretend that I needed their help to spot all the landmarks of Guernsey. And it's such a joy to, to or such a, a chance that this piece of art has been borrowed by Prince Charles and that it will be at Buckingham Palace this summer for a, a, an exhibition of national importance and I can see through the eyes of the children how meaningful it is for them because that means a young artist can come here we can appreciate her talents she can talk to us she can take a blank sheet of paper and draw something and that it will end up at Buckingham that's how they see it and it has been very touching to see what they told about this. But for me, uh, it's opening up doors in their mind in terms of, I can back myself up, I can trust myself, I can go and do things because she made it, she, so I can do it too. I feel quite special and quite privileged because we're getting the same kind of in a way, the same treatment as these members of the royal family. <laughs> and it's quite, 
amazing, <laughs> quite <laughs> breathtaking, that they are going to be seeing something with their eyes that we've seen with our eyes as well. Um, it's nice to see like somebody who doesn't do something and just paints and just pen because I used to like doing stuff with paints but then I like doing things with pen now. I really liked finding out how long it took her and how many different pens and there was a big piece of artwork as Emma mentioned about how Olivia had drawn a forest and it inspired me to write my own like piece of work um, relating to that tree and how everything had happened and Olivia is really detailed and everything is finished off. Nothing is left, just a tree with nothing on it. It's always got something happening. It was quite interesting to see um, more artwork from other artists, not just Kazmir Milevich. And I found it quite interesting how she uses um, these pens and she goes through loads and loads of them to do these amazing big pieces of artwork. Having Olivia Kemp's work now in Buckingham Palace, it kind of shows us because not only does she start from a blank piece of paper, but also she obviously started as a student like us and she's come into our school, she's helped us gain techniques and kind of shows that we've started as students so maybe one day we could be doing similar things. Olivia drawing the parts of Guernsey and emerging it into one was definitely very cool because it's, it really relates to us because we might see those things every single day and how she's interpreted it into her art is amazing, like how the pen has just created what we see every single day. With Olivia starting with a blank piece of paper, it reminds everyone that you will start from the same place and it's what you do with that blank piece of paper that makes it your piece of work. Um, and it's just nice to know that everyone starts with the same thing. It makes me feel more confident to know that she was at the same place that I am and to know that she got up to the standard she is, which is incredible. And it really inf influences and inspires me to do the same. When we talk about art, we think in a school it's going to focus on the art skills, painting pictures, using watercolours, pastels, whatever. But the, there was so much more beyond the artwork that the children wanted to find out and it led to finding out about the history of Malevich, um, his life story. Um, we looked at briefly as well at the history of Russia um, because that's where he spent most of his life. Um, it then fed into geography because we've got the Eastern European and Russian um, elements in it and Ukraine. Um, we started doing geography around that area of the world uh, and children had to use maps like Google Earth and the software on that to plot sort of latitude, longitude lines of where his paintings are based around the world now and where they're housed in certain museums. Um, in terms of English, because we'd done so much work on his history and life story, we could then produce biographies. And even in maths, it lends itself to maths work uh, because lots of his artwork includes shapes. Um, so we looked at tessellation and 2D shapes. So lots of different areas covered there already just through just that one piece of artwork that we've shown. We looked at um, Ari, this is a bit of Ari there. Um, we did, well, art, yeah. <laughs> like that. Um, we did English, writing the biographies, and we did math, I think, and ICT, and we used, we did geography using Digimap. Um, which is a good good site for like pinning points, and we did where um, his different paintings are in the world. I think seeing the pupils really engaged, um, in particular the Kazimir Malevich, the children, and it was they were big pieces, and to know that they were the paintings. We used an app on the iPad called Morpho to take a still image of the picture, and then I recorded my voice over the picture and then the, the picture then moves its facial expressions you can choose the eye color everything they they were a little bit perturbed because it didn't it would never talk directly to them so 
we were very lucky that every evening there tended to be someone that caught the painting talking on an iPad, so we'd show them the next day, and we think it's because the, the children were too noisy, that the paintings were too scared to actually talk to them while they were here, but they did have a good go, we'd quite often see them going up to the paintings and trying to whisper to them or talk to them, which was lovely, but the engagement was amazing, because they could see a purpose for the things that they were doing, if the painting asked them to, to get them some food, the children obviously wanted to do that straight away, so it, was, it inspired them, and the enthusiasm was was obvious, I think. It led on to the next bits of learning, so what they wanted them to do next, so was it to make a fruit salad, which they had to do. And again, we looked at the curriculum to see in design and technology and the healthy eating, what do they need to cover? So within that, we looked at the um, healthy food, um, different um, meetings, like uh, different dietary requirements as well. It, the picture was really specific, so it said about um, it's got to have three different fillings, they've got to be healthy. So it was getting the children to research. And it was a great opportunity as well for children to try new food as well. There was children, you know, that had never eaten a tomato before and things like that. So that was amazing. And it, t you know, it took the learning in so many different places. Yeah, I think with the Arts for School programme, the children are actually oblivious to the fact that they're actually being taught something. They, they, they think they're just having fun. They think they're just enjoying you know, painting pictures um, and dancing and music to children isn't, isn't work. So they're actually picking up so much without even being aware of it. Um, I think this experience is fantastic. When children are interested, they will always want to learn more. They're not just learning what they have to in class, they're coming home and researching themselves and asking for us to give them other opportunities as well because it's something that they're really passionate about and it's a fantastic way for them to learn. Trying to get my children to do homework usually is a bit of a task um, and I think this project uh, incorporating the arts of mathematics for year six was really good. Um, they were looking at art but also including geometry and I think the other big thing was that they then had a big research project to do, so we're getting online and looking at the cultural background of the artist and then looking at his influences and then even looking at how colours affected the mood of the paintings. Yeah, my daughter coming home from school being so excited about her new topics has really shown how important it is for me that she has this programme in her school. She comes home and really wants to learn. It's often the case that children come home and they just want to sit in front of the telly or, or just chill but she wants to research the artist, she wants to look at where they've come from, she wants to sit there for hours and hours and find out as much as she possibly can. She's, she's so enthusiastic about the whole thing. Oh, when, when I pick, I mean, we unfortunately have an hour and a half school run because I've got four different pickups to do because of age ranges and children being at different schools. So it's usually a very good time to chat and ordinarily Mia being 11 has got her head buried in a book or she's trying to listen to some music um, but it was probably one of the few times she'd get in the car and she'd be like and we've done this today and we've actually painted this and we've started this project and I've got to get home and mum can I borrow your laptop I need to get on and I need to research this uh, if I can't get your laptop can I steal Mia's I uh, George's iPad <laughs> um, but actually getting in the car and talking about it all the way home and no matter where we were going, it was, she'd get up in the morning and she could you make sure Dad prints this off for me because I can't get the printer to work. And Dad had to get involved and print stuff off. And then he's, he's an engineer, so he was getting involved and helping her with the geometry side of things as well. So actually, with me um, being sort of the arty one at home and colours and doing the research and the reading bit, because I like to read, I helped out with that. Then Dad managed to get involved um, and pick her up one day to take her back to the office to go and print off loads of bits for it. And, it was actually quite good because it got everybody in the house talking about it. There is something that I learned very recently. Um, all the artworks in school are, are my artworks and, and for some years sometimes I had those artworks. And I realised very recently that the children know my artworks better than me. I realised that. Because they are being asked to look at them and when they look at the artwork, they need to figure out what they're going to do in geometry, creative writing, mathematics, religious education, ICT, doesn't matter what. And so they're really learning how to observe. And that is a very good skill.
It's a very good skill in business, in life, in social skills. And I realized that. It sounds obvious, but I just recently realized, listening to the children, how well they know my pieces. And I think uh, that makes me really, really enthusiastic. Because the narrative, the reasons to do this program have been basically, they've been passed, they've been outperformed, yes.